Okay, I thought I would do a update of Board Game Room Door. A few things have changed. It's my sign when you come down the bottom of the stairs. I'm gonna scroll around here. Once I figured I'd use this gimbal, my apologies. Got some boards on the stairs here. It's such a carrying board. I got two of these. One of them came with the base game. When I did the Kickstarter for the, I think it's called the Deluxe or the Collector's Edition or whatnot, I came with another board that was double sided. I didn't know what to do with the extra board, so I put it here. This is the side board. The other side of it's damaged. Sent me a replacement, so I just put this one up here. And down here, behind the air conditioner, because it is hot here in the summer, the air conditioner. This is the Snowdonia board from the Kickstarter. The other side of it's damaged, so I sent me a replacement. Up here, and just sort of my camera work, my gimbal here. Two pieces of art here. Um, I can change them, as I've said before. I've just kept these up there because I'm a big fan of the Miko's art. So he did all the art for the West Kingdom and the North Sea stuff and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Valeria stuff. I don't have any Valeria stuff, but he did do the art for that. So, love his art. Really hoping that he continues to do art for the South and East series because there is a South and an East that they're doing. Um, Shem's already said that he, I think South is coming next, I think. So you come down here. This is my two-player games here. Not much new on the two-player game side. Do have Twilight Struggle Still in Shrink. It's the first edition. Um, picked up. This is the upgrade kit. So I gotta eventually open that. Put the upgrade kit. It's upgrade, upgrade kit for three different games. The reason why I bought it was I think it was two dollars by the upgrade kit for his Imperial Struggle. He came up with a second edition. This upgrades it to second edition. Do have a bunch of pops. Don't know if I'm gonna keep them or not. Um, they're taking up room, and I need to get some more shelves because I'm running out of room. A little picture for Santorini, the Zeus edition. Up here, more pops come all the way across. I want to sell these because I'm gonna run out of room for board games eventually, like soon. And I can put two one by four Calyxes on top that I'll show you eventually here shortly. Down here, don't know if much has changed, but I'll show you here. They have the Cleopatra Premium Edition. This is the non-painted. I don't have any of the little mini expansions. There's like a dice and just an extra figure. Castle of Tuscany. You span across here. Pick this up. Look, new and shrink. Bora Bora. Picked that up um, Monday. I went strawberry picking about an hour and 20 minutes away from the house here. Um, haven't left the city in the last year really because of COVID. Decided now that some of the restrictions are being um, um, lessened here in the Canadian province that I'm in, Nova Scotia. So we went strawberry picking and the store that I wanted to visit for quite some time that's down that way. Uh, that's kind of like a toy store slash post office slash school supply, office supply store slash board games, uh, puzzles. So I wanted to visit there and I went and sure enough they had Bora Bora and 45 Canadian plus tax. Couldn't couldn't beat the price. A couple of editions here, Kanban, uh, the EV edition. This is the metal cars in it, and the Kickstarter edition. Um, down here, Rococo Kickstarter edition has the metal coins and all the extra little goodies. I'm going down here. Don't know if there's any extras down here. I did pick up turn and taxes um, at a yard sale here locally. Guy was unloading a bunch of games, so I uh, picked them up for dirt cheap. I think it was thirty dollars for both of them combined. Down here, of course, we got North Sea Collection with the collector's box for Raiders. And down here, we got the uh, West Kingdom stuff here. Again, sorry for my gimbal work, but we got the West Kingdom stuff here. Um, and uh, I believe the collector's box for Architects or Paladins, I forget, it was done in a recent Kickstarter. I have it coming. Whenever it comes, I think it's coming in the next few months. This is the... Um, this is a 3D printed tray that I did for the uh, for architects. It's for the bank or the I, I forget what it's called, but it's but it's in there. It doesn't fit in the box anymore because I have a 3D printed insert in here and uh, 3D printed insert for all these two here. So get down here, span. Not many changes down here. Uh, not many changes. This box here that's in the way. It's um, box that I got a bunch of games in. I only kept it because one of my cats, this cat actually, that's drinking water back there in the back. She crawls in it and uses it as a bed, so kept it for seven or eight months because she likes it. Every once in a while I'll add some more uh, 
of the uh, uh, paper that comes in boxes, so she has a fresh, fresh bed. But the littlest things that cost you nothing that cats love. Again, more pops up top. My Star Wars pops are coming along here. Mercado de Lisboa, haven't played it yet. Vital Cerda and Julian Pombo, definitely excited to give that a try. You know, the lockdowns are kind of over. Maybe we'll get there. Some more games here. Drum roll, really underrated game. Not sure why people haven't really tried it, but um, it's a game that I would highly suggest you look you look for. It's a little harder to find now. Uh, Marco Polo 1 and 2. Don't know if I'll keep number 1. I had a couple of issues with number Number 1's a great game. I had a couple of issues with number 1 that you, in number 1, you don't have to travel. You can just concentrate on contracts, and you could win the game <clears throat> while somebody else traveled. And I proved it to a few people that doubted me. I... Went into a game and said, I won't travel, you can do whatever you want to, I'll just do contracts and I'll beat you, and I did. Um, if you house rule it, um, and say you have to travel, or at least travel a little bit, then it's a great game. Marco Polo 2 fixed it, because basically in that game you have to travel. Uh, you don't have a choice, because a lot of the way you get your contracts is through traveling, and, and then the synergies of getting some of the tokens that allow you to travel to certain areas and certain stuff you do, that's how you get the points. 100%, 100% sub, you know, fixed the problem that I had with it. A few more games down here. Grand Astro Hotel did not back the Kickstarter because I'll have to get the, I think it's the last Waltz, whatever, expansion. But I upgraded it with my own 3D printed bits um, with uh, 3, 3D printed like strudels and coffee cups and I think uh, cakes, I think. Um, so it was no need for me to pick up that. Lorenzo um, just added uh, metal coins to it um, to... No, sorry, didn't add metal coins. I added metal coins to Trois. Um, upgraded that with some generic metal coins that I had. Um, Tuluva, which is a great game. Quadropolis, which is a great game. Y Yamatai, which for some reason it's the one Days of Wonder game that kind of slid under the radar when they were making really great games. It's a fantastic game. As is Five Tribes. Biblios, fantastic game. You come down here. Got some more games down here. Nothing really has changed. Whistle stops down here. Uh... Pax pa Pamir, excellent, excellent game. Come up to the top here, I got some, um, oops, just gonna get this to focus up here. Got the dual layer boards for Terraforming Mars. Uh, up until recently, I wasn't a big fan of Terraforming Mars, and I, it may have been who I played with, or just just the setup or whatnot, I'm not quite sure. Played, a friend of mine recently um, backed the Kickstarter, and we played it, and I absolutely loved it, so I started collecting stuff, because I'm Buying the game, I've already got uh, colonies coming. Uh, printed some three D printed ships. Then I found out later that the ships came with they came with some versions of colonies. So I had somebody just dropped them off reef just within the last hour. Some more ships uh, and a local store that I that I got in contact with uh, was selling versions of the Kickstarter. So um, I ended up getting the small box. I was too late to get the big box. So uh, come up here. Some art on the wall here. My favorite game, Bus, which you saw down there, but there's a picture of the original cover art for uh, Bus. This here, as before, is just a bunch of storage areas where I store uh, random baggies, containers, sleeves, the whole nine yards, um, la label maker and stuff. Come down here. This is what I was talking about before. So I've got these disc shelves, which is the non-IKEA shelves, because at the time when I bought them, IKEA didn't didn't exist, which is this right here. Then above it, I have, see if I can get that in a picture, I have a 1x4 I, Calyx over here as well. 1x4 Calyx. Um, so that's what I want to do over here, two, two 1x4s. So, we've gone up to the top. A keyboard. Um, I use that when I'm uh, when I'm doing um, uh, online gaming, um, mainly board gaming. Don't do actual online like Video games, this is when I do uh, online gaming. I hooked up to my laptop with my extra monitor. That's down here to give me a little bit more space with my camera. Um, this is a great little mouse pad. Something that I would highly suggest if you ever see a store selling it. Board Game Bliss in Canada had a few recently that I think they've been stocking recently. It is the Mayday Card Sleeve Finder. It's an older one, but it works. It's a, it's a mouse pad. You slide your card on there, figure out exactly what size it is, and then you can see the name of the pack of the sleeves in the Mayday version, in the Mayday line, and you can sleeve your cards. Um, Catapult Kingdom, done by a local company. This just recently got the Dice Tower seal of approval. Um, 
done by a, lo by a local company. Uh, fantastic people. Uh, Vesuvius Media. Local to me so much so that they're literally down the street by like two minute car drive down the street. It's fantastic. I uh, got the all, you know, the, the all in pledge with all the extras. There's a bunch of little mini expansions in here. It's fantastic game. It's fun. Real fun. Really good for kids. The volcano, the pirate ship. I forget what the pirate ship's called, um, but it's fantastic. Um, so we're going to go through here. Oof. Squeeze. Coming down here. I don't think there's many new games on this shelf because the new games tend to go down there, but there is a couple. Um, Steampunk Rally Fusion, that's the collector's box. Um, I have both games in there. Uh, Hallerto, fantastic game. That's also new. Love that game. Uh, as you go down to the bottom, there isn't much new down there. Let me get a better shot of it there. There isn't much new down there. That you can see. Franchise. Copenhagen Deluxe, I think it's the higher end with the acrylic pieces. There's the expansion, with those mini expansion with the acrylic pieces. Come up here. Oops. I come down here. Down here, over here. Sorry for my camera work. This is my gimbal and I'm trying to use it. A couple of great games here. Um, Raiders of Scythia, which is... Uh, it's basically Raiders of the North Sea uh, with a trimmed down versions of the expansions it's basically if i had a choice between raiders of the north sea and this the base game to base game i would choose this every day because it's got more in the box when you add in the expansions then i go raiders of the north sea just because there's a bit more in the expansions uh hadrian's wall haven't played it yet apparently it's a fantastic one right lost ruins of arnak fantastic game can't wait for the expansion i can want to 3d printer insert in that so you go up top here 15th anniversary to Ticket to Ride. I did have the 10th anniversary. I sold it. I don't know why. I probably shouldn't have sold it. I could probably buy it back, but it's going to cost a little bit. Empty box. Uh, Scythe. The only reason why I kept it is because it's a art connoisseur edition. These are a couple things that I picked up recently at a local yard sale. Um, the original squad leader. Um, this is the original print run from 1977, I think. Yeah, 1977. This is the original print run of Panzer Blitz from 1970 I believe pretty decent pretty decent condition so I picked those up I think I spent it was a lot that I bought like a like a like a package of games that the turn of taxes came with and I think it was I spent $110 for it sold a few things that I had extras of the guy was trying to get rid of a bunch of stuff and over here if it'll come out easy and it's not is the second Maybe third printing of a choir from 1962 or 1963, I believe. Maybe 64. But it's a second. It's a second or third printing um, of a choir. Fireball Island in the crate. Come back down here. We have Scythe. This is Scythe with all the literally almost the only thing that I don't have is the metal um, max, but everything else I have the I have the. Um, the spiral bound rule book. I have the modular board. I have the broken token inserts. Both. I have all the coins plus the different coins that were colored. Um, I have all the expansions. So you know, I have all the I have all the extra cards, all the promos. The only thing is a metal metal max. I may eventually get them, but they're it's fifty dollars for a set. I thought about it, but at the cost, it's kind of you know, kind of kind of costly. We here, Praga. It's got a bit of a a bit of a box lift because there's a 3D printed insert in there. They're fantastic insert. Cloud I haven't played it yet. Merv is a fantastic game. Love this game. A 3D printed insert in there as well. Paris, a fantastic game. Uh, this is the Kickstarter edition with the metal coins. The I believe it is a folded space insert. I'm not quite sure if it's the same company. Maybe it's a different company. But it seems like a folded space type thing. Um, insert. I have the expansion on order. Fred Porter Kickstarter edition. In the Hall of the Mountain King Kickstarter edition. Isle of Cats was not bought as a Kickstarter edition, but now has all the extra stuff. Has a has a bit of box stuff because it has a 3D printed insert in it. Um, I am in on the Kickstarter, so I guess the 3D printed insert is going to go poof, gone because it comes with a wooden insert to go in it. Uh, Arboretum, but this is the deluxe one, the wooden one that came with the foil cards. They come down here, my Carcassonne collection hasn't changed much. Of course, the wood, the wood edition of Carcassonne on there. Come down here. Happy to pick up this recently, the Deluxified Yoko Hama. I've been looking for it for quite a while because I forgot to back to Kickstarters. Uh, not much change down here. 
I've got some of the Carcassonne maps here. These are, get them off the, I think the BGG store sells them maybe. I know Board Game Bliss brought them in and I got these straight from uh, a friend of mine went to Essen and brought them back for me. So, Essen a couple years ago. Come up here. Some new additions. Uh, Dice Throne Season 1 Reroll. Haven't played this, but I've played lots of Season 2 and love Season 2. Dice Throne Season 1 Rerolled. Kickstarter edition of the Master Set for um, Snowdonia, Quaxaquellenburg. Have all the expansions except for the most recent one. The most recent one's on its way here. It says, uh, plus the Geek Up Bits from BGG, because I love this game, so I get the Geek Up Bits. Plus the 3D printed insert, so there's a lot of content in this box. This box weighs a ton. Uh, the Tavern uh, of Tiefenthal, this is the German version. Um, at the time, it was hard to find the the English version. There, It's completely language independent, so it doesn't matter what version you get. Just print off the English rules and you're good to go. Uh, this is made by the same designer. Arguably, I think this is a better game than this, but a lot more people like this better. So this tends to get more table time than this does, but I think this is a better game. Pipeline, uh, not the Kickstarter edition. Uh, over here, uh, Emperor Spells and Steam, not the Kickstarter edition, but I'm missing a couple expansions on this. This is the Kickstarter edition of this, which is uh, Gugong. This has the velvet, the uh, velvet, you can see it's shifting. Uh, the expansion, game trays, all the jazz is beautiful. This is the collector's edition of. Suburbia, but not the Kickstarter edition. I'm missing some of the wood bits and the coins, which I can buy off the website. Um, I haven't yet because I was originally I was going to go to Origins. Um, uh, I was going to go to Origins in 2020 before COVID became a thing, and I knew that they were going to have a booth, so I didn't buy it online because the shipping to Canada is a little bit. It's like 25 or 30 American, uh, so it basically makes the extra bits almost $100. So I was going to just pick it up when I was in Origins. I knew they did have a booth and. Well, COVID happened and didn't get to go to Origins, so maybe eventually I'll go there, maybe I'll pick them up, or maybe I'll order them online, so. Up near the top here, Kirk is on Big Box. We have um, Lords of Waterdeep with the expansion, an extra 15th anniversary, because it's not mine, I run a group by locally and somebody purchased this. Uh, currently, right now, they are stuck out of the country due to COVID, trying to get back in the country, so... Um, when they do their games are here, I've got a bunch more of their games. This is also theirs as well. Um, so I'm just holding on to them. Come down here. There's a Tricarian Collector's Edition, the Anachrony Infinity Box. I will tell you, I forget the name of the newest expansion, but Anachrony was all, was a top 10 game to me of all time. I will not play without the recent expansion. I forget what it's called, but it's uh, um, you, you can blink. So you can basically, in Anachrony, your board is... Uh, has limited spots, so people are racing to go to parts of the board, but in the expansion, you can blink to another board, so it's, do I open up that spot so an opponent can, can get to it? If I do, I get this bonus, but I also have this negative thing that can happen to me, too. So, it's it's really cool. The big box is a great thing. Kalis, uh, 1303, fantastic game. Come down here. So the T-Series here. Love, love the T-Series. Missing Zulkin. Zulkin's out getting painted right now. The wheels are getting painted. Uh, so it is out right now, but I do have it. Come down here. Endeavor Age of Sale. Fantastic game. It's the Kickstarter edition. Another fantastic game. New Frontiers. Another fantastic game. Pacific Rails Inc. This is done by a local company. Again, the same one that did the Catapult Kingdom. They're just down the street. I was lucky enough to be able to play a pre-production copy of that before it came out. It's a fantastic game. They have some nice... It's really underrated, in my opinion. It's fantastic. The upgrades that, that they did with the metal coins and the and the 3D bits and stuff, fantastic. Uh, Traintopia, this is my train area here. Uh, Paris, uh, connection, still haven't opened it yet. Picked up for 20 bucks. Chicago Express, fantastic game. Didn't Haven't played this version of it, played it online in BGA a couple times, which is what led me to buy it. I, there was a local cafe, board game cafe. There was two in the city. One that was, I guess you'd call it a board game cafe, but didn't really add, was they had board games but we're more of a bar. They decided to completely get out of board games and turn it into a, to a pool hall, and they sold their entire collection. So you basically went down, picked, picked up a bunch of games, and um, you can make offers on, on different games. I made an offer on a bunch of different games. Uh, Chicago Express was one of them. Um, basically, the other day, I bought a bunch of games that were all brand new that, for some reason, they had on their shelves that no one ever played in this bar. And Chicago Express was one of them. I paid 120 bucks, I think, for the entire lot of games that I bought, and I sold all of them for decent prices, like discounted prices for 
for local people, and I think I made a profit of 20 or 30 bucks, and I get two games. So, Age of Steam, the Kickstarter edition with all the extra maps, have the heavy cover map in there as well. Um, Steam, Ride the Rails, uh, and Irish Gage, love Ride the Rails, it's a fantastic game. Um, Railways of the World, fantastic game as well. Alamada, but by the way, fantastic game, same with Coinbra Alamada, I have upgraded with generic coins, the Lisboa generic coins um, that Eagle Griffin did before they lost the uh, brass, or not, not Lisboa. Actually, I guess they are Lisboa. They used to be the brass metal coins, and they turned into the Lisboa metal coins because Eagle Griffin lost the license to brass, and it went over to Roxley, so um, this is, now has those Lisboa metal coins. I do have it in Lisboa as well. Down here, where I was in the world, as I said before, Fresco Big Box. So, Fresco Big Box down there. Just recently repicked up Kemet. This is the Deadless Quick Lunch Insert. Also has one of the expansions. Need to pick up one more expansion. Um, Dune Imperium, fantastic game. Love Dune Imperium. And for those that are asking, or that I've asked numerous times, is Dune Imperium similar to Lost Runes of Arnak? No. They're, a collection, your collection deserves that both. They're both fantastic games. Dune has this, has a great worker placement thing going on with the cards, the synergy of the cards, uh, the race to the point value, um, um, and 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 so on. Whereas Lost Ruin of Arnax has your temple track, limited rounds. Um, you're discovering they're they're both fantastic games. They 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 play a little similar, but I but at the end of the day, they're different games, and they both deserve to be in your collection. Chai Tea Collector's Edition. Um, I have the expansion coming. I believe they sent out an update recently that it's shipping today or tomorrow, I forget. Uh, Reef, um, it's an underrated game in my opinion. Uh, Dragon Boats of the Four Seasons, this was a maple game. Um, kind of hit under the radar. Um, I am in the rule book. It's the only reason why I keep that game. The game's okay. I keep it because I'm in the rule book as a playtester. Um, so I, I love the fact that I'm in the rule book for something. Um, this is the Azul collection with all the expansions, all the promo tiles. The only thing I'm missing, I'm missing promo tiles for... This one here, I just rem recently remembered, and of course, 5211 Azul Edition. Down at the bottom, the Quest for Eldorado, all the expansions and so on down there. Flow of History, Glenn Moore, uh, The Chronicles, this is the Kickstarter Edition. Uh, Clans of Caledonia, don't know if you can hear that, but one of my cats is now crawling in the box. She's in the box now, that I had mentioned before. Down here... Black Angel, fantastic game. So is Kashgar. So is Ilios. Ilios is a French game that was hard to find. I had a friend of mine go to France and pick it up for me. Underwater Cities. That's the um, expansion box, but it is a full game. I think I kept it because I like the expansion to art cover better than the actual game. Um, it has everything in there. It's in a 3D printed insert. Fits fine, sleeved. But any more content, and it'll have to be stored in another box. Uh, diamonds. Villagers, which I had, there's a Kickstarter for the expansion, I'm in on that. Um, there's another game that was part of that deal that I bought at that board game bar cafe thing. Honey Buzz is not the Kickstarter edition, but do have some of the extra bits. Do not have the wooden coins. Uh, down here, Egizia, uh, fantastic game. That's the Kickstarter edition with the double sided boards. You have the new Egizia and the shifting sands and the old one. Down here, um, that is Istanbul Big Box, but it also has the dice game in there as well. Come up here, we have um, my brasses. These are the Kickstarter edition with the um, iron clays inside them. And then, of course, below that, my wooden box iron clay with the two decks of iron spades cards. Move this over the side here, and then um, my extras here. I do play poker from time to time, so this is a 200 box, so I should have bought a 400 box, but I wanted the cards, and then, so here I have another 200 box here, and another 200 box here, and I believe this 200 box and this 200 box are configured to equal the 400 box, and then this is just an extra one, and again, there's extras in these two as well, so, which, which come with the game signed, Martin Wallace, I mean, I think it's generic, but it was picked up at Gen Con a couple years ago for me, some art cards from the Miko. I believe that came in Tomb Saga or something, I forget now. Come down here after the Empire. Retail edition, but I did back the latest uh, Game Found. We'll call it Kickstarter, but Game Found, which has the, uh, the additional uh, bits. So I paid the extra to get 
the game trays and all the extra bits for it. Merlin Deluxe Big Box. Uh, probably the best game tray system I've seen. You should look it up. It's a fantastic game. Uh, Era. Don't have the expansion yet. Going to be getting it. The original Great, Great Western Trail with the expansion and I have a 3D printed insert. Mar Maracaibo, one of my top 10 games. Love this game. Um, a lot of content in your metal coins. Rallyman GT. This is a game that I played during the pandemic quite a bit on BGA. Bought the game. This is everything available for Rallyman except for it's a couple of Kickstarter exclusive stuff that I just didn't get. But I got everything else. I didn't back the Rallyman Dirt. I should have because I could have gotten the additional Kickstarter stuff for this. Wingspan with all the expansions that are available to date, plus 3D printed uh, ins or 3D printed um, resources that I made myself and a 3D printed first player marker. Everything sleeved, tapestry, tapestry expansion. This is a fantastic game. Push. The reason why I bought this was because I saw Z Garcia and uh, playing this on Essen Online or something like that. I think is what they did. That I said it looked like a great game, so I picked it up. It's really not that expensive. It looked really fun. Go down here. Uh, Bond for having a chance to play that. Blackout Hong Kong. Um, it's a second edition. Bliss, Borgia Bliss in Canada fan, had a phenomenal, so it was like 20 bucks for that. They must have bought a bunch of them. It's an underrated game, fantastic game, we'll love it. Energy Empire, fantastic game. Really glad that they sorted out uh, through the estate to be able to get that expansion reprinted. I was not a part of the Kickstarter, but I certainly will pick up the expansion. I believe Grail Games is the one that stepped in to help out and run it, and I certainly 100% will... will um, We'll be picking up that expansion. Beyond the Sun, fantastic tech tree game. Uh, there's a lot of content in that box. Uh, very expandable. In these drawers, it's playing cards. I got into collecting playing cards, which was as a direct result of um, this. So I got some playing cards down here in my uh, my drawer here. A lot of them are three. There's three eleven right here. There, are, these are plastic cards up here. These are some bicycle cards. Um, and you'll learn that Bicycle is something that's owned by USPCC, um, and basically USPCC is a company that prints that prints playing cards. Um, in order for you to use the name Bicycle, you just have to print in their factory and get permission for them for them to use the Bicycle name. So a lot of times, a Bicycle card, uh, where's one here that I can find? Like this one here, is printed by USPCC, but you'll see down here at the bottom, Focus, come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. You'll see at the bottom that is the this here is the mark of the art studio that made the basically the um, art on the front of the cards and some of the art design on the back of the cards. So um, that's where that comes from. Um, they have what's called standard bicycle court cards, which is your, your queen, jack, king, uh, so on, and you don't have to have bicycle standard court cards with a queen, king, jack in order to have a bicycle deck. So a lot of people will do it. Theory 11 um, is printed in the same... So Theory 11 is a design studio. They don't print their own cards. They are a design studio, and you'll see at the bottom, they are printed by the USPCC, which is the United States Playing Card Company, which is the company that owns bicycle playing cards. Or it's the one that owns the name bicycle playing cards. So there is a couple of decks that Theory 11 makes that are bicycle decks, which is which is kind of cool, but they're printed in the USPCC. The majority of the cards that I have are printed in the USPCC. I do have a set of cards that aren't. Uh, they're in the bottom drawer. I'll show them to you in a second. They're in the bottom drawer down here. Actually, they were in the top drawer. Um, this is a brick of um, 311 playing cards. These ones here I did just a random brick. I want to have their different, their different style. I open my decks because I like to see them. Their art style. So the ones that aren't printed by the United States Playing Card Company are these ones. These were Kickstarter. These are Egyptian ones. There probably are more in there, but I think the majority of them are USPCC. It's coming out of the bottom shelf. Or should go over the shelf here. Over here, Clinic Deluxe with the expansion. Um, Megalev Metro. I picked that up as it looked pretty decent. Haven't played it yet. Whistle Mountain, fantastic game. Pax Viking just recently got this in with the metal coins. Come down here. Yiddo Master Set Collector's Edition with the expansion and Red Rising Collector's Edition. Great, great game. So, the changes over here. Um, there's been many changes over here. My two wood editions of Pretzel Games. I got a crib board. This is the cat. One of the cats is playing with that. It was sitting there. It's a crib board that I got here. Um, made by someone locally that um, 
had a glow forge, so I got that made and stained locally. And of course, when you open it inside, I got a Theory 11 playing card deck in there. So, I love my crib. Down here, um, this is where I store, as I've said in the past, I do group buys through Kickstarter and through online stores like Board Game Bliss and Dice Owl. And this is where I keep them when people are picking up. So this is waiting for the rest of a railroad ink. Um, Kickstarter pledge to come in. There was a bit of a mess up. It took them a couple months to sort it out. Now the rest of it's on its way. Um, this is stuff that need, people need to pick up here. This is magazines I didn't know where to put. Somebody was giving away magazines locally, so I just picked up a bunch of the magazines. And an extra board game book, because I don't know what to do with it yet. I got a couple other ones there. More games that people are picking up down there. This is fairly empty, because I just had a recently... Um, had people pick up uh, last couple of days. Extra Dynogenics down there. That's the guy that has the 15th anniversary um, um, ticket to ride up there that's stuck out of the country. That's his. Uh, change the TV. I used to have a 50 inch TV down here. Now I have a 55 inch Samsung TV. It used to be in the living room. It's only about a year old. Decided to get a 65 inch. A nice new sound bar down here. Some kids' toys because the kids. My daughter does go down here and play once in a while. So we come down here to the table. The table, oh, wrong way. Panning the room here for you. So this is my blue Yeti on a uh, I forget what it's called, the Yeti caster arm or what or whatnot. That's when I was playing the board game uh, board games online. I still use it because I still play board games online. And when I do uh, any type of a uh, uh, Google Meet call and so on or a uh, zoom call i'll use this this is my gaming chair that i picked up because i found it very hard when i was sitting playing online games and even when i was playing in-person games that uh, i found it very hard to sit for 20 minutes to half no, sorry for half hour to an hour without getting sore so i got this this is a cyber chair which is a canadian company that recently set up within the last couple years doing chairs i believe they did most pads before that i did a lot of research uh they were their price it's price almost the same as a secret labs chair uh, probably maybe 10 bucks cheaper, if that. Um, it's super comfortable, love it. Um, worth every penny that I spent on it. I think the only difference is that this will fit up to somebody up to 350 pounds, I think is what the website said. Something like that. And will fit up to somebody 6 foot 10 or something like that. Whereas the Secret Labs chairs, you need to get a Titan XL for that. So I think it's cheaper, maybe $30 or $40 cheaper as a Titan XL. But when you're, if you're smaller, so if you're getting a regular Secret Labs chair, so if you're getting the Omega or the Titan this is more expensive than the Omega, but cheaper than the original Titan, or like the middle, like the middle Titan, not the Titan XL, by like ten bucks or fifteen bucks, and then it's maybe thirty or forty less than the actual Titan itself. But it's a fantastic chair, love it. Uh, the only thing I was kind of humming and hawing is that they do tie-ins, they do a lot of embroidery. I'll show you the back of it here in a second. They do a lot of embroidery um, on it, so it's a very loud chair. This is the color that I picked because of because of. Uh, because of that, but you can see it's embroidered right in there. Nice little neck pad there. But you see the back of it. It's embroidered. It's not bad, I suppose, but they do a lot of tie-ins. They have Mortal Kombat chairs. They have the license in Canada. And if you're in the U.S., they cannot sell to the U.S. yet because of their license. They only have licenses for um, uh, for uh, uh, Canada because of those licenses. Because I believe Secret Labs has a bunch of them. But it's... Very similar to a Secret Labs chair. Um, you'll see, has the four. I think it's called 4D armrest. They go, they go in, out, up, down, back, forth. So in, out, back, forth, up, down. And this is your here. It'll lay down like 180 almost, and then your lumbar support back here, similar to a, what a Secret Labs Titan's chair is. Your Omega has a pillow here for the Secret Labs for this one, for Titan and Titan XL. It's a little dial here. This is the same dial. Looks very similar to a Secret Labs chair. I very much enjoy it. And like I said before, this just proved to you that I just don't keep a box that's just sitting here empty. Let's, let me focus this down here. There is my kitty laying in the box. She loves this box, and that's why I keep it with all the stuff in it, because she lays in it, so I just let her hang out. So that's her little bed that she goes into. Anyway, that is my games room for for July 2021. And that's what it looks like.